Meanwhile, on the comic box, good news, everyone! Comics. Hey everyone, and welcome to issue number 60 of the Comic Box, part of the geek to geek Podcast Network. I am Rob, your friendly neighborhood comic geek, and wow, 60. That would be five years in comic book time of issue 60. Good for us. We haven't been around for five years, obviously. But neat. This week, news. This is our second half of our San Diego Comic-Con coverage for 2017. And this is all the news that's fit to be mentioned by me, I guess. I did my best to look up as many different stories. Last week, we were talking all about trailers. And so this week, I gave Liam the week off because I had to record early because I'm headed out of town this weekend. Um, Well, for part of the weekend. Either way, I'm going to be gone when we normally record, so instead I decided I would do this one solo. Cool reason that I'm gone, and I guess it's not really my weekly geekery because it's going to be for next week, but if you're up in the Duluth area, come on over on Saturday, which is August 5th, I'm going to say, and um, my buddy Bob and I will be playing guitar as the incredible band We Are Brob, which you can find us on Facebook. And uh, we play guitar for kids and families, which is hilarious because when we started, we only played songs that were like, you know, geared towards adults. I'll just say filthy. Not, they weren't all filthy, but, you know, think um, if anybody remembers the Dan band, you know, that guy that that sang um, Total Eclipse of the Heart in, oh God, what was it? Old School? The idea is singing songs, but you throw lots of swearing in them. But now we play for kids. And so our Facebook page is very confusing because every once in a while we make dirty jokes, but then realize that we don't have that as an audience anymore. We're not in college anymore. So it's weird. Anyway, doing that this weekend, which is fun. Let's take a look back at last week for my weekly geekery. First up, I did what I finally said I was going to do. I read volume one of Umbrella Academy by Gerard Way. That's the guy from My Chemical Romance. Uh, It's got like this cult following and it's going to be coming to Netflix. So I figured I'd go and pick it up while I was grabbing random things off of Hoopla. And it feels very like Hellboy, feels very Hellboy influenced where they take you straight into this world with all these weird wacky things going on and you just have to kind of pick things up as you go along. They're not really going to take time and explain a long backstory to you in the beginning of the comic or anything like that. You're just sort of figure it out. There's all of these kids and they all have weird powers. And so they were turned into like this super team and we are catching up with them years later where they've all gone their separate ways. And one of them who disappeared into the future because he ran away from home but had time travel powers is finally back after being gone for like 50 years, but he's still in the body of a child. And one guy is a head on a monkey. Like, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in here. So there's a lot to like. I just, I, it wasn't bad. It's just, it didn't hit me right away as, like a lot of other books do where, oh man, this is a thing I need to keep reading. Uh, the other thing I've been doing comic wise is I started reading Inhumans. Uh, in in bulk, and I'll get to the reason why in a second. Uh, I am starting with the Marvel Knights run. I read the original, like, origin story that you can find out there, and then I'm doing the Marvel Knights, which is like eight issues or something, and I feel like I'm missing a whole lot. I know the general backstory of the Inhumans because I've read Realm of Kings, which is part of the greater um, Marvel Cosmic Universe stuff that was done in, like, 2008, 2010, where they did um, Realm of, what was it, War of Kings, Realm of Kings, and then it got into all of the Annihilation and Annihilation Conquest. All that really cool Marvel space stuff that took place for a few years, um, which is really awesome stuff if you've never read it. Oh, excuse me, I didn't. Beej retweeted the video that I just posted. I also just posted a video on Twitter right before recording uh, telling you why I'm not doing a Facebook or Twitter live video of this. And it's because I'm literally in a closet surrounded by pink blankets and pink uh, curtains in order to deaden sound. So I look like I'm in a bunker somewhere screaming things about the government, which I'm not. 
but it looks really weird. So I just decided I wouldn't do it. But I shot a video so you can see it. And I ramble because it's me. Um, so I'm reading Inhumans. I joined a Harry Potter cosplay group. I posted on this on the subreddit. The group is called The Marauders MN. You can look us up on Facebook. We've done two events so far, like two days apart, which were both pretty fun. I think it's going to be like a cross between just people in the Twin Cities that like to dress up in Harry Potter cosplay um, and organizing, hey, I'm going to go to this Harry Potter trivia night in costume. Let's all go together and, you know, win costume contest awards and also organizing actual events that we go to. Uh, the first one we did was an actual event we were invited to as a group. It was a Harry Potter birthday party at a local brewery. And so we had a table with a bunch of props and we took a bunch of photos with people and did trivia with people and had a hat where we sorted people into houses. And that was very cool. And then uh, this past Monday night, we did a Harry Potter trivia night, which was a fundraiser for a local like free clinic thing. And um, that was one where we just signed up and then went as a big group in costume so we could take photos with them and and give them cool photos to post on their Facebook page and stuff. So I think it's going to be a mix of things. I've never been part of like a proper cosplay group before, so it's going to be kind of neat. Uh, while we were talking about Inhumans, the other thing I wanted to tell you is upcoming Minnesota Fan Fest here in Minnesota, August 19th and 20th. This is the event Liam and I are going to be panelists for. We got the official schedule back where basically when you sign up, you say, I want to be a panelist on here are my top 10 choices. And then they assign you. The problem is they only put Liam and I together on one panel and it's not even about comic books. So I think we're going to do some swapping around. But as of right now, anyway, I don't know who's going to jump on the other person's panel. But here are the panels that uh, Liam and I will be on. On Saturday, August 19th, Liam is going to be on Comic Book Villains Showdown at 10.30 a.m. I am on a comic book trivia panel at noon. Liam is on The Last Jedi and the Future of Star Wars at 1.30. I am on Marvel vs. DC Comics at 3 p.m. And then I am on The Inhumans from comics to TV to movies at 6 p.m. Normally, they only want people to be on two a day. Um, I think we're one of the larger, uh, departures from that because I was like, they needed more panelists. And I said, oh yeah, dude, just, I'm pretty sure I can talk for several hours a day without a problem. Sunday, August 20th, Liam and I are both on Harry Potter and the panel of fandom at 10 30 AM. I am on, um, actually, which is a game show panel at 1 30. Liam is on Marvel vs. DC Movies at 3 p.m., and I am on What is Halloween at 4.30, where we talk about loving Halloween. Um, like I said, some of these are going to get swapped up because right now the only one we're on together is the Harry Potter one, but I will update you guys next week just in case any of you happen to be in the Minnesota area. I don't want to... Um, lift up or shoot down this con. I've never been to it. It is run by the same company that does um, the Phoenix or Arizona Fan Fest. It's a company from Phoenix, Arizona. So I know some people talk about how some cons are just, they pay celebrities to show up for signatures and then you have a bunch of people selling stuff and that's it. And then they have, you know, panels where they get volunteers to come and be panelists and they, you know, I get free entry into the con and I think that's all I get. Um, and everything else is like, I have to come up with my own content for them and all. So for all I know, it's not going to be fun at all. Um, hopefully it will be, hopefully it'll be good, but this is, seems like one of those sort of corporate cons showing up, but I'm not turning away because I get to sit and talk to people about the stuff that I love. So that is August 19th and 20th here in Minnesota. Um, obviously news is our big thing this week, so I'm just going to jump straight to the poll list, uh, because I'm doing this Inhumans panel and I really don't know much about the Inhumans. That is my poll list. I think once I'm done with the, um, the Marvel Knights run, I'm going to look into, there is a 2000 mini series, which only has like four issues. So I don't know if I'm going to try and find that. And then there's volume four of Inhumans, which is in 2003 and lasted for 12 issues. And then I think after that, they do Secret Invasion, which was a miniseries, and then move on to the Realm of King stuff, which I've read. So I guess for sure I'm going to try and read this volume four. 
It's just I don't know what the TV show is going to be basing themselves off of. So for all I know, they're going to be pulling from the original Inhuman series, which um, I don't know. It might be on Marvel Unlimited, but I don't have a subscription to that right now. So I, I have to figure out where I'm going to find all of these things. But our poll list for next week is lots of Inhumans. And then um, one other thing, which I will get to, I think, as we go through news. So before we head into our topic of the week, let's have a commercial break where you can listen to I'm Void and I'm Beach, and we're the geek to geek podcast. Well, we make it. It's sort of us. Anyway, here's that commercial. And we're back. Woo! This show is part of the geek to geek podcast network, folks. We have uh, us and Geektitude and the geek to geek podcast and maybe some others. And then there's also Geek Fitness Health Hacks and Video Game News Now, which show up from time to time. All of our shows are great. Please listen. Please subscribe. Please share. Tell your friends about us. We don't advertise our network because we're all just people talking on microphones for fun. So you are the way we spread that info. Please do so. All right, let's get into the topic of the week with a ba 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 do ba 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 is this Marvel legacy thing. So right now in the comic books, they're doing the current uh, Secret Empire storyline with the evil Hydra, Captain America, and all that. After that, they're doing Marvel legacy. And the point of this whole big, and it's not, you know, I, I don't think it's necessarily a crossover. Marvel has sort of been backing up a little bit. I can't really say that because they're doing Secret Empire. They've been doing a thing where they have um, these a line as they want to call them where they have the big banners across the top and they've been doing this for quite a while where they do look we're doing new like marvel now marvel now was considered this line kind of like a new 52 thing or rebirth where all the comics in this case it's going to be 53 series uh will have this marvel legacy along the top and it's just signaling that this is part of this larger initiative not necessarily a crossover event so when marvel now the point was we're going to show you all of these you know they had all this all new all different stuff as well so marvel now is they're going to show you a bunch of new characters and young characters and different characters marvel legacy the point is to get back to the core characters of the marvel universe so it's going to kick off with a 50 page one shot by jason aaron who we like because he writes thor and other comics thor is the, the main one that i read that he writes and he's starting it off by telling us about prehistoric avengers from 1 million bc Yes, it's ridiculous, but I kind of dig it just like they did their big monsters storyline thing. I didn't read it. They're monsters unleashed or whatever they call it. Uh, didn't didn't read that, but I love the idea that they're do willing to do some stupid stuff. Um, the downside is those really hardcore continuity fans are going to say, all right, so you're telling me that in the established Marvel Universe, there is a team of prehistoric Avengers in 1 million BC that were made up of Agamotto, who I guess was the Sorcerer Supreme at the time. Think the Eye of Agamotto, the thing that Doctor Strange wears around his neck. And we're talking comics, not movies. It's not an Infinity Stone, unless they change it. Uh, so Agamotto, a prehistoric Iron Fist, a prehistoric Phoenix, a prehistoric Ghost Rider who rides a woolly mammoth, a prehistoric Black Panther, and Odin, Thor's dad, who has looks like he's holding on to Mjolnir on the cover of this Avengers 1 million BC thing. So it starts there and then spans the entire history of the Marvel Universe. So it might be them trying to update that that history again, do a little bit of pseudo retcon. Um, the running theory is we'll get a return of the classic Captain America in the classic costume, as well as Bruce Banner back as Thor, Tony Stark back as Iron Man, the Odin son back as Thor. That's the male Thor that everybody's used to seeing in the movies and such. And also, just to piss off collectors and confuse new people, just like DC did, the comics here are going to return to their classic numbering, which means Iron Man is going to be Iron Man 500 and whatever, even though technically it's the start of a new series. And I hear Void's wallet retracting 
and I hear him getting upset because I know this makes him angry and he totally has a right to be. It's kind of a neat thing, but it's also incredibly confusing because if you're a collector and you're like, all right, I got 395 and then this is suddenly, you know, 450. What are those middle ones? Oh, that was issue one through four of this series and then one through 12 of this one. And with Marvel being obsessed with always releasing these new number ones, and they also release these like point one issues, which are just a catch up issue that don't necessarily progress the story. They just kind of introduce you so you can jump on. Yeah, it's getting confusing. They also say they're doing cover designs that are more like those from the 80s and 90s. I don't know what that means unless that means they're going to start having word bubbles on them again. Otherwise, I'm not I'm not really sure. Um, and then some of their comics are going to have three page backup stories that give background on the characters in these comics for new readers that cover classic moments from their histories. Um, like I said, there's 53 of them, so I'm not going to list them. There are a couple that are interesting to note. Uh, there is a Falcon solo comic, which tells me that obviously we're not going to have him as Captain America anymore. Uh, which means Steve Rogers returns. All new Wolverine is continuing, so we'll still have a female Wolverine. Uh, they're bringing back Marvel 2-in-1, which was, like, I think Marvel either a team-up or it was two short stories in one. I think Marvel team-up was just the team-up book. So it might be a comic that has two shorter stories in one comic. They're bringing back Moon Knight again. I don't know who the creative team is. There's like eight Spider-Man titles because, of course, there is. Um, but it's interesting because the only other character that has multiple titles is is the Avengers because there's different Avengers teams. So there's Avengers, Uncanny Avengers, and U.S. Avengers. And then, like in the 90s, we're going to have a bunch of Spider-Man or Spider-Man-related titles. I will link to the Wikipedia page. So that if you're interested, you can look up this whole list and see if there's something you're interested for. And if so, let me know, because I want to know what people are looking forward to. Uh, they're also doing some one shots that are also still going to be numbered as though they're continuations of the original series. Again, really annoying. Uh, but there's going to be a Dark Hawk one, which I'm pumped for because I like the character, even though they completely read it as origin story in the the War of Kings thing. Um there's going to be a Dazzler one-shot, a Silver Sable one-shot, which makes me wonder if they're going to try and sort of reintroduce the character before this supposed Silver Sable Sable and Black Cat spin-off movie. And then a Power Pack one-shot. I believe it was Joe from Geektitude who said he wanted to see the Power Pack come back in some way, shape, or form. There's at least going to be a one-shot comic book. There are others as well. Check on the list. Um, there's also going to be a fan magazine, a fanzine, as they used to be called, titled Foom, as in Fin Fang Foom, that they're going to be put out. And then it says they're doing some sort of clip and save stamp program, which, like, people cutting st st stamps off of their comics because that's ruining their comics. I'm guessing it's going to be an app thing. I know, I think they still have it, where you buy physical issues and there's like a Marvel VR app where you would, you know, uh, it's a augmented reality thing where you would shine it over a page of a comic or something and it would lead you to a video of the creator talking about that moment or something. I played around with it once, didn't do a whole lot for me. I'd rather just read the comics. Anyway, that's Marvel Legacy. As far as the X-Men are concerned, they're going to do this big Mojo World thing crossover where Mojo, if you remember him from the cartoon at least, he's the big, ugly, huge, fat, yellow guy who sits basically in a wheelchair, but it's not a wheelchair, it's a bunch of spider legs. And he runs a planet called Mojo World where everything is entertainment. And he's an incredibly annoying character in the TV show. Well, he shows up on Earth captures the X-Men, and puts them in battle against all of their best villains in order to get good ratings on his intergalactic television show. I would assume this is meant to be a big nostalgia-driven event of all the X-Men villains. I don't expect it to be like a big dark thing where people are dying or whatever. I, I, It seems to me, just by the description, that it's supposed to be more fun. Marvel TV, Runaways, apparently... Uh, this is a show coming to Hulu, will take place in the same universe as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Neat. Marvel movies. Michelle Pfeiffer is going to be playing Janet Van Dyne, the original Wasp in the upcoming Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, movie, which actually just put out a tweet the other day showing that they 
um, have officially gone into production. Uh, we found out about Captain Marvel. We got some concept art, which looks very cool. The costume looks a lot like sort of the, the Captain America costume right now, where it has a lot of layers, and I really like that look. Um, interestingly, that movie will be set in the 90s and will feature a Nick Fury that has two eyes. And the villain from that movie are going to be the Skrulls. The Skrulls are a race of shape-shifting aliens that had a cool storyline called Secret Invasion, where you found out that several of your favorite characters, maybe, have actually been Skrulls for any number of time, in some cases, years. I think that's neat. I question doing Captain Marvel in the 90s, unless the idea is in Infinity War or the movie after Infinity War, she's going to show up as a fully-fledged character, and then we're getting an origin story set decades in the past um i don't know but secret invasion would make for a good movie that would be a cool way to add some big plot twists to like infinity war or whatever comes after infinity war the unnamed avengers film um if it's like secret invasion i think that's cool and it makes sense if that's why they're not telling us the title because that gives people the chance to learn everything that's going to happen. Marvel has also announced that they're doing a Doctor Doom movie. When I say Marvel, I'm guessing that's Fox because they have the rights to Doctor Doom and the Fantastic Four. So they're going to do a Doctor Doom standalone. Um, Iron Fist, I guess this is TV news. Some of my stuff got mixed up here. Iron Fist is getting a season two. Legion might introduce a very young Professor X. Uh, and the show Gifted, which is the other X-Men themed show coming to Fox, is not connected to the X-Men movies, which of course makes sense then why they get Brian Singer, the guy that did the X-Men movies involved and advertise it as being run by Brian Singer, the guy who did the X-Men movies. Way to go, Fox. You guys are, are not smart. Um, the Defenders are coming up August 18th, which is two weeks away. So next week, we're going to be talking Defenders. I'm going to see if I can go back and watch all of the final episodes. I don't know. I'm going to be binging Inhuman so hard. Um, that I'm going to do my best, and so we'll talk about where all of the different shows lead off and sort of what's coming with the Defenders, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Inhumans is also coming September 1st, so I guess maybe I'll do... Uh, and I, see, I don't see why. If I'm learning all this Inhuman stuff, uh, I'll do an Inhumans prep episode. Uh, I also have a correction that I need to make from last week. When Liam and I were talking about the Thor Ragnarok trailer, I kept saying that the dude with the rifles, the actor that plays Jesse Custer in Preacher, was the, the character of Curse. I am wrong. Curse showed up in Thor number two. This guy's name is Scourge. I apologize. I got my characters totally mixed up. Scourge is this guy who has this giant blood axe, and he's Asgardian and um, pretty hardcore. But they show him with guns in this one because, I guess... The idea of Asgardians with guns is meant to be very cool. All right, that's Marvel news. Let's move over to DC with... DC Comics news. Um, if you've been watching the headlines, Batman in Batman 24 proposed to Catwoman. And in Batman 32, I guess is when we get an answer because let's draw that out as long as possible, obviously, because comic books... I don't... See, that's my thing with wanting trades. Like, I'm not big on the cliffhanger that I have to wait a month for anymore. We are in a binging media economy, folks. You shouldn't have to wait that long for that sort of thing. But anyway, after whatever arc they're doing, he's going to go into the desert. And there's art where it looks like he's wearing a costume from Justice League. And he goes crazy and all the Robins are involved. I have no idea. There's also a story that came out uh, post-Comic-Con saying that uh, Batman has officially been listed as a metahuman. I saw this all over the place. In the actual panel in the comics, it's simply, um, it's Amanda Waller saying that he's considered a metahuman, but it's like metahumans like, and then list Batman. This is if memory serves. I looked it up a couple of days ago. So it's, it's, I don't think it's that serious of a thing, but the idea is this Batman, um, thing we're going to be seeing coming up, which is this metal thing might be digging into whether or not Batman should be considered a metahuman with superpowers because it's possible that he came back from the dead, like younger and uh, and that sort of thing. Um, also out of Comic-Con, uh, Batman's latest sidekick, Duke, who is sort of the lead Robin from We Are Robin, now has a nickname. They are calling him Signal, which I thought he already had a name. 
and I thought it was another bird name. But I haven't been reading Batman for a while, so apparently I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, DC is doing a crossover between its main, like, rebirth titles and Young Animal. And Young Animal is their imprint where they do, like, Doom Patrol and Shade the Changing Girl and more really indie-feeling books. Um, cool. I don't know. Neat. But that's a thing. If you're out there and you're reading Young Animal, they're doing a crossover. Um, Nicola Scott, uh, who drew part one half of the most recent Wonder Woman run, says that she is looking to draw Nightwing and also enjoys drawing Dick Grayson's butt, which is totally a thing out there. I don't know. I I guess I wasn't around when that became a thing of of enjoying you know, the way that women are, are always drawn suggestively in comics or in ways that accent their bodily features. I guess Nightwing's butt is a thing. Um, no word on whether she actually will or not, but that's just a story that's going around. And she's a fantastic artist, so I say let her do whatever she wants. Okay, so I mentioned this Dark Knights or this this metal or whatever dark thing that they're doing where they have posters that look like metal albums. And then it looks like the back of a T-shirt for... Um, uh, concert dates and locations, which is like all the issues involved in this whole Dark Knight's metal thing. Uh, it's this weird big mystery story, and this is just from what I gather by reading online. It points back to Batman coming back from the dead, possibly while fighting the Joker when he possibly died, sort of at the end of Scott Snyder's run on Batman, and it has a bunch of like evil Batman kind of characters from like other universes that have justice league superpowers. I don't know. But after that, there's this, this dark matter banner kind of like the, the Marvel legacy thing. So it's going to be dark matter uh, over the top of several DC titles, including several new ones. So we're getting brimstone, the terrifics, which is Mr. Terrific having a team of his own, the silencer sideways, immortal men, damage and new challengers so keep an eye out on those series because if it's anything like most of dc stuff they're going to come and then they're going to introduce new characters and then those series and their characters will be gone in a blink of an eye because they're not batman books then we have this doomsday clock thing so it's a, a logo that looks like the watchman doomsday clock but at midnight is a superman emblem uh this has been confirmed by Jeff Johns, who's writing it as a story that involves Dr. Manhattan uh, from Watchmen, who has been rumored to be the reason that the new 52 universe even exists. Um, Jeff Johns is the guy that redid um, Superman for a while. He redid The Flash. He redid Green Lantern. He redid Aquaman. Uh, he's kind of their big, I think he's chief creative officer for DC. So people like his stuff. So maybe this will be cool. Um, the thing I don't like is it seems to be the way that they are properly and officially incorporating the Watchmen universe into the DC universe, which I don't like. I, I think the whole point that, I mean, they, okay, so they incorporated the Charleston Comics characters into DC, and those are the characters upon which the uh, Watchmen characters are based. It's kind of the same as how they worked Wildstorm in, even though a lot of those characters are based on characters in DC Comics. So it just gets confusing because it's like, here's Superman, and then here's a character that's supposed to be our version of Superman right alongside Superman. And it's just, why don't... Stop. Watchmen was a good story. Just let it be. Stop trying to milk it. Seriously. Anyway... It's going to be a Superman-centric story, so if that excites you. Uh, first issue is coming out November 22nd. It's going to run for 12 issues with breaks in March and August. The idea is it takes uh, a year out of the DC Universe, or it takes place over the course of a year. So, Or, excuse me, it takes place a year ahead in time of Marvel DC continuity. So by the end of one year of DC Comics, it will have caught up to the end of that. I guess. Yeah, the, it will. They'll catch up at the same time. The point is, when when that series is done, it will mesh in seamlessly with the DC universe rather than them having to say it happened in the past or the future. 
Uh, Harley Quinn turns 25 this year. Happy birthday, Harley Quinn. So instead of a Batman day this year, September 23rd, they are turning it into a Harley Quinn day. So there's going to be lots of crossovers and one shots and miniseries and merchandise because it's Harley Quinn. And Harley Quinn is DC's Deadpool in that slap the character or a logo on anything and sell lots of it. In um, other news, which is kind of big news for DC Comics, they've seen some success with their superhero girls stuff, toys, lines, comics, etc. So what they're going to do is split up DC's publishing into three groups. So there's going to be the standard DC stuff, which they're going to keep calling DC Rebirth. There's going to be like the superhero girls and uh, other things wrapped up into what they're calling young readers. And then there's also been a call for more adult stuff. And so they're going to have a mature reader line, but they haven't said what it's called yet. I don't know where uh, young animal is supposed to fit. I, maybe young readers, but it's not like for kids. It's more like here's some weird stuff for teenagers and people who like weird, you know, sort of off the beaten path stuff. And they used to have Vertigo as their mature line, but then Vertigo split off and is kind of its own thing. Um, so there's no word on what their mature line is going to be called. Uh, good news is we will be supposedly getting a steady cost of $3 per issue for comics, which is nice. I don't want to spend any more than that. I don't do a whole lot of single issues anyway just because of the space thing. But if it's only 3 bucks, it's I'm much more likely to go and pick up a physical copy, even if I don't know that I'm going to bag it and board it and keep it. I don't know what else I would do with it, but I just – I'm not the kind of person that needs to collect comics. I like reading comics. And when you keep buying single issues, they stack up real quick. Um, they are also saying that they're going to do more standalone graphic novels and miniseries like uh, Dark Knight or Watchmen. That's very cool. I've always liked those. I'm the kind of guy now as an adult that would rather go and pick up a trade that carries a, a full miniseries in it or pick up a standalone graphic novel that I can put on a bookshelf that I can throw in a backpack or a bag and take with me if I'm on a trip somewhere rather than carrying a bunch of loose comics. Um, in that vein of those standalone graphic novels, Frank Miller says he's working on Superman Year One. Frank Miller working on Superman. I have no idea what that's going to look like. I hope it doesn't look like his Superman in the Dark Knight books because some of the stuff he does is okay, but he's gotten, I feel, more exaggerated as time has gone on and darker and a little more extreme. So I have no idea what his Superman is going to look like, but I yay, that's out there. I like the American Alien Superman. I thought that was a pretty good origin story. I mean, if you want just Superman in one package, go read All-Star Superman. But yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what Frank Miller's Superman would look like. That's like an episode in itself of just talking Frank Miller stuff and what that's going to look like. Um, DC Television, obviously, uh, we talked a little bit last week that there's a ton of trailers for everything you can go look up. Um, Krypton is, is coming, which is a show that's about the planet Krypton before Superman was born. So... Because that's the story of Superman that people want to see on television. Uh, it, it sounds like they're going to have Brainiac, Doomsday, Adam Strange, and even Hawkwoman in the show, because I guess why not? Um, only other TV thing I have here that's not a trailer is Tom Welling, who played Clark Kent in Smallville, is going to be on Lucifer Season 3. I don't want to offend the guy, but I wasn't aware he was acting anymore. Good for him. I thought he made a really good Clark Kent. Uh, by the end of the show, you could kind of tell he had the same, like, three moves when he was acting. Like, this will ruin Smallville, so earmuffs if you're a big fan or you're going to plan to go back and watch it at some point. But in the later seasons, anytime he had something significant to say, and I just, I caught this, and it bothered me so much. He takes a step forward with one, turns his body a little bit, and, like, leans forward and looks serious whenever he says something. He, like, steps into the line. It was the same as the character that played Lana on that show. Did this thing where she squinted and shook her head and was like, ugh, anytime she said things. And that really got on my nerves just because of the amount of time they did it. Loved Allison Mack, though. Thought she was great. <laughs> DC movie news. All right. Um, ben Affleck. So there was all this stuff of, is he going to leave? They talked about how they might slowly usher him out. And then I was seeing headlines that he signed on for three more movies as Batman. So who the heck knows what's going on with Ben Affleck as Batman? We know we're still at least getting the Batman film, um, so I don't know that they're, like, not going to use him as Batman after Justice League or what's going on. 
So I guess we'll see. And we'll see if we like his second outing as Batman anyway. Maybe the fans will finally turn on him in Justice League the way they planned on doing it on Batman v Superman, but they ended up liking him. Um, Wonder Woman 2 has been announced, which is cool. And the Flash movie is going to be titled Flashpoint, which was the name of the first episode of season three of the television show. They did an animated movie based on Flashpoint. It's a storyline where he goes back to save his mother from being killed by the reverse Flash and in so doing completely changes sort of all of reality. And you get like a new Batman that's actually Bruce Wayne's father who goes insane after his son is gunned down. And so he's like this hardcore Batman who uses handguns and kills people. And you find out that the Joker is actually his mom, Martha, who, Martha, who went insane. And I know I'm throwing spoilers left and right here, but it's a thing and it's been out for several years. So I apologize. Um, So I don't know. I don't know if they just really like that name or if it's going to be based on the comics, in which case you could get a glimpse by going and taking a look at the animated movie. It was kind of a weird animation style, but I think it was meant to be this darker tone. Um, But the point being, if they do Flashpoint, it means they're opening up sort of the multiverse as far as the DC uh, Extended Universe is concerned, which means, who knows, maybe you will end up seeing some of the television show characters on the big screen, which would be kind of interesting. Except then they would have to completely redesign their costumes in order to make more money with toy sales, and that's annoying. Um, The Batman universe uh, is going to be expanding, obviously, because it's Batman. So we know we're getting Batgirl with Joss Whedon, but Jeff Johns, again, chief creative officer, whatever his role is, says that they're going to be doing a lot more movies than just that. There's a rumor of a Joker Harley Quinn spinoff. There's going to be um, a Gotham City Sirens, which is a Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy and Catwoman movie. There's still supposedly going to be a Suicide Squad 2, rumors of a Deadshot movie. They're saying that the next one we're going to get is going to be Shazam, which is DC's Captain Marvel, which is going to make things very confusing. But they've, for a couple of years now, since the New 52, been running with this idea that DC's Captain Marvel, who's the big red guy with the lightning bolt on his chest, um, his suit is red. He personally doesn't have red skin. Uh, who's, who was always called Captain Marvel, which was this whole lawsuit thing back in the day, um, says the name Shazam, which is the name of a wizard, sends down a lightning bolt and turns young Billy Bastion, Bastin, whatever, into Shazam, who is basically Superman. There was actually a lawsuit before DC bought the rights to Captain Marvel where they claim that he was a ripoff of Superman. So, because, yes, we need more clones of the same character. Anyway, um... Now they're calling him Shazam, which is dumb because if Shazam is what he says to call down the lightning bolt, it means that every time he says his own name, he gains or loses his abilities. But anyway, that's supposedly the next DCEU movie. And the sad news is that The Rock, who has been cast for like 15 years to play Black Adam, think the evil version of Shazam, the superhero, not the wizard. Again, super confusing. Super confusing. I guess he's not going to be in that movie, which is weird because they've been talking about him playing that character for years and everyone's really pumped to see it. Um, They officially announced the Green Lantern Corps movie, which I could have sworn they did like last year when they put out their big list of movies, but they did it again this year. Um, And in very funny news, Henry Cavill, the guy who plays Superman in the DCEU, is shooting Mission Impossible 6, and he's under contract that he must have a mustache. But I guess they're doing reshoots or whatever, filming things for Justice League, which means they have to go in and digitally remove his mustache. Because the internet is a thing, this is hilarious all over the internet. There's gifts of Wonder Woman with a mustache, all of the characters having mustaches, the idea of, if you're going to digitally remove the mustache, you might as well, you know, give somebody else the mustache or let's give everyone mustaches. It'll be great. So I, I, cause I started seeing this Superman with a mustache stuff on Twitter and I had no idea what they were talking about. That's what they were talking about. All right. DC TV stuff. Um, or did I already talk TV stuff? I already talked TV stuff. Well, here's some other TV stuff because I didn't organize my outline, right? 
Young Justice Season 3 was announced, which is awesome. We knew it was coming, but they officially gave us the title, which is Outsiders or Young Justice Outsiders. It's going to feature a bunch of new characters. Um, and I'm excited, but I, I, again, like everything else, it's going to be on its own content app because every single DC and CBS and everybody else out there has their own HBO Go. I to make you watch it on an app instead of on television because nobody watches actual TV and I guess they don't want to go through Netflix or something. Um, so it sucks that you have to go and get whatever this app is and pay whatever they want you to for this app to watch it. Otherwise, maybe I just wait for it to go on Netflix because money. I don't know. Either way, I'm looking forward to it. They showed a teaser image with uh, some of the character designs. Everybody looks like they're dressed like ninjas, like... Nightwing has a ninja mask that covers his nose down instead of his eyes and his hair. So whatever that's about. I mean, I guess somebody could f get a picture of him and compile and find out he's Dick Grayson. Or they would just know because a little face mask doesn't usually do it. But yay, Young Justice Season 3. It's going to be cool. And maybe the fact that it's going to be on this app instead of on like Cartoon Network where it was before. They're going to be able to do some more adult stuff. You know, I mean, I feel like they got pretty deep into the story on Cartoon Network, but I like the idea of putting them somewhere where they can take some more chances and not have to worry just about toy sales to push it. As far as Watchmen goes, we said a while back that there's going to do uh, there's going to do there's going to be an HBO adaptation. Uh, apparently, it will not be a straight adaptation of the books, which I don't know if it's good or bad, but probably good because. Like. I think if you try and take Watchmen and do it word for word on the screen, like that is not the medium it was created for. There are pages of just text in that because you are reading part of a book. And then there's a kid in the comic book reading a comic book and we get that story, which parallels another story going on. Like there's a lot of ins and outs in that uh, graphic novel in Watchmen. And so I don't think a straight up adaptation would work. I just hope they don't go too far out there or they go way far out there you know what i mean like the walking dead took chances went and did its own thing introduced a brand new character in daryl that everybody loves and the show still gets huge numbers so maybe there is something to be said for diverging from the storyline but i feel like watchmen is a much more tightly written story where watchmen is this long saga that takes place over a long period of time so i don't know Independent comic stuff. Jump, 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 e e indie. Thank you. Thank you. I know you're clapping on the other end. Um, I just have uh, two pieces of news. I have three, but we already talked about Umbrella Academy. That's still coming to Netflix. Um, Spawn is coming back to the movie theater. It's been like 20 years since the last Spawn movie. They did like the animated series and all that, but I guess Todd McFarlane has decided it is time for a reboot of the Spawn movie franchise. So that'll be several years, but hey, if you're a Spawn fan, get excited. And then Hellboy is also getting a movie reboot, and the film is going to be called Hellboy Rise of the Blood Queen, which I think is based off of one of the trades. I started reading Hellboy a while back and it just couldn't suck me in kind of the same way Umbrella Academy didn't. I don't know what it was. It just didn't do it. Um, David Harbour is the guy playing Hellboy this time around. That's the cop from Stranger Things. And the big news that came out today, so this isn't Comic-Con news, is Ian McShane, known for playing Ian McShane roles. I mean, come on. He's Wednesday in American Gods. He's um, who cares what his name is. Super awesome, cool guy in the John Wick movies. We like Ian McShane. A lot of people know him from Deadwood. He has been cast as Professor Broom, the father of Hellboy, which is neat. Because the guy who played it in the other movies is, and I can't think of the actor's name off the top of my head, but I believe he recently passed away. It's the guy that played Ollivander in the Harry Potter movies. Played Professor Broom in uh, the first Hellboy. So, neat. I think Hellboy looks awesome on screen. Um, I really enjoyed the uh, Del Toro movies. So here's hoping this one will also not be a giant CG fest and will have more practical effects. All right. What do I have next in my outline? I have the poll list. We already said that. I'm reading lots of Inhumans. And then I'm going to go and try to watch the final episode of each of the Marvel uh, Netflix series. 
Maybe. We'll see. I am in the real world. I've been extremely busy lately. So um, I'm going to do my best. Worst case scenario, I will look up like episode synopses for the final episodes so we can talk about where all the characters are now and what we think is going to happen going into the Defenders. And that is it. How did I do on time? Not bad. Not bad. That was a lot of news. I know it was a giant dump on you guys. Uh, I hope you were able to process everything and that whatever news pieces stuck out to you, you can remember because I want to know what you're most excited for. So here is my call to action for you guys. Hit me up on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at ComicBoxCast. You can go to our subreddit, which is reddit.com forward slash r forward slash geek to geek cast or go to Reddit and search geek to geek cast and make sure you spell out the to because there's another geek to geek on there that i think is a dating thing so uh geek to geek cast we're on facebook uh you can search geek to geek cast on facebook uh i have an email the comic box podcast at gmail.com don't worry nobody remembers that or emails me anyway so um but find me <laughs> tell me what it is your most most you're most excited for if it's the movies, if it's the TV stuff, hopefully some of you guys are excited for comic book things because this is a comic podcast. I know we talk a lot about the TV shows and movies, but I mean, come on, man, we're getting a new Darkhawk comic. Who is not excited about this? Most people, most people are not excited about this, <laughs> but I, for one, am. Uh, please remember to give us star ratings and reviews on iTunes. Um... We love those, and I think we were saying if we get 25 by the end of August, we are... What were we doing? I think we were going to pick a random review, contact that person, and they were going to receive free comic books signed by Liam and myself, which makes them worthless. And then if we have a lot and we feel good, maybe we'll still do that bad movie review. Honestly, I know we're probably going to end up doing it anyway, but if we're like drinking and swearing and we're making it an adults-only mature content podcast... Um, I need to know that you guys want that to happen. And the way for you to let me know is go ahead and give us a star rating and a review on iTunes. What else? What else? I guess the geek to geek Podcast Network, geek to geekcastcom has a list of all of our current shows. Again, there might be some more coming in the future. We are working on that. No announcements yet, but um, go do that. And you know what? Just because, because I can... Go listen to the Adventure Zone podcast because they I, I'm I'm almost done listening to the episode that they're saying might be the second to last episode of this giant arc. Obviously, don't start with these episodes, but I just want to say I'm excited for that. I guess that's a weekly geekery thing, but um, it's been really good and they're doing really big things at the end. And it makes me really pumped for Joe's uh, podcast that we're, we're waiting on. Um, and that's no pressure, Joe. Take your time. Do it right. But uh, the role-playing podcast that I might get to be a part of um, coming up at some point in the next, we'll say year for safety's sake, because it takes a lot of planning and a lot of uh, timing things to get right. But that's going to be very cool. And and that's it. So, bye. Ba-da-ba-ba-doo-down. Ba-da-ba-ba-doo-down. The the comic box. Doing news. Did it, 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 did